In the mid 19th century, Britain was still far from being a democracy. The Great Reform Act had swept away the rotten boroughs, but it only increased the electorate from around 478,000 to 813,000 out of a population then of 24 million. While the Chartists had failed to get Parliament to agree to extend the vote further in the 1830s and 40s, by the 1860s, the demand for parliamentary reform was on the rise again. The death of Prime Minister Lord Palmerston, a staunch opponent of reform in 1865, and the conversion of William Gladstone to the cause, revealed to the Commons the year before, provided an opening for a serious Liberal Reform Bill. Lord John Russell, who had been instrumental in the passage of the Great Reform Act, was now Prime Minister, and in March 1866, Together with Gladstone, a reform bill was introduced that would begin to admit the respectable, skilled working class to the franchise. When this was watered down by an amendment supported by both a hostile Conservative Party and a section of their own party, Russell resigned. Lord Derby formed a Conservative government with Disraeli leading the party in the Commons. Something quite remarkable then happened. Derby and Disraeli introduced their own reform bill in part, this was responding to fears of unrest, as a sharp economic crisis caused widespread unemployment, and a reform meeting in Hyde Park that summer descended into rioting. In part, though, this was a cold political calculation to dish the Liberals and capitalise on any goodwill the measure might generate with the new voters. On the 15th of August 1867, the Representation of the People Act, also known as the Second Reform Act, received royal assent. This was after a series of radical liberal MP proposed amendments, all of which Disraeli accepted, which meant the final act was far more radical than that proposed by Russell and Gladstone. The Second Reform Act granted the vote to all householders in the boroughs and lodgers who paid rent of £10 a year or more. It reduced the property threshold in the counties and gave the vote to agricultural landowners and tenants with very small amounts of land. The Act nearly doubled the electorate in England and Wales, from 1.3 to 2.4 million men. This was equal to approximately 16% of the adult population. Many of the new voters were industrial workers in urban boroughs. In the rural county seats, most agricultural labourers were still without the votes. A tactical decision by the Conservatives to cede the towns they were already losing to the Liberals, while shoring up their position in the countryside. Disraeli, who became Prime Minister on Derby's retirement in February 1868, decided to call an election that December to reap his anticipated electoral reward. The Liberals won the election with a majority of 112.